Welcome back. In the second part of this lecture, we're going to talk about x and y intercepts, and we're going to talk about the midpoint and distance formulas. Uh, first, x and y intercepts are relatively easy to find. If you're thinking about being an x-intercept, then you would be a point that's on the x-axis. And if you're on the x-axis, your y value is 0. If you're a y-intercept, then that means you're on the y-axis. And if you're on the y-axis, then your x-coordinate would be 0. So that kind of gives us an idea of how we're going to solve for these things. If we wanted to find an x-intercept, we know the y-value would have to be 0, so we let y be 0, and then we solve for x. And if we wanted to find a y-intercept, we'd let x-value be 0, because if you're on the y-axis, your x-coordinate's 0, then we just need to solve for y. So we've got a couple of equations, and we want to find all of our intercepts for these. If you know what these graphs look like for these equations, then that can help you out. So for example, if you recognize that part A is the equation of a straight line, and you know for straight lines that aren't vertical and aren't horizontal that you've got one of each kind of intercept, then I'd expect one x-intercept and one y-intercept for this problem. Of course, if you don't know what the graph looks like, that's fine. We're going to talk more about that in Chapter 3, knowing what graphs should look like. Uh, but for right now, if you did know that this was a straight line, then that already gives you a little bit of an advantage of knowing what to expect. I'll start off with finding my x-intercept, and I'll do that by letting my y-value be 0. And so I'm going to put in 0 for y, and then I will solve for x. So I've got 5x minus 20 equals 0. Or when I solve for x, I've come up with x is equal to 4. I have to remember that an intercept is a point. So when I stop here, I shouldn't say that the answer is 4. I should say that the answer is the point 4, 0. Because, of course, the x-intercept has an x and a y-coordinate. Same thing with the y-intercept. I'm going to find its value in the same sort of a way, in this case by letting x be 0. And then I'll remember that after I've solved for y, I'll give my answer as an x and y point. So I've put in 0 for x. I've got minus 4y minus 20 equals 0. And then I just need to solve for y, and I find that y is negative 5. So that means that my y-intercept should be the point 0, negative 5. All right, so let's do the other one. We've got 4x plus 9 equals y squared. Uh, I'm going to do the same sort of work that I did before, starting with finding my x-intercept. And I do that by letting the y value be 0. So I have 4x plus 9 is 0 squared. Or in other words, 4x plus 9 is 0. And when I solve this, I'm going to find just one value for x, in this case, negative 9 quarters. So we've got one x-intercept, and that's negative 9 quarters, 0. If I want to find my y-intercept, I will let x be 0. So I'll have 4 times 0 plus 9 equals y squared. Or in other words, y squared is 9. And there's going to be two solutions for this because there's two different numbers that when I square them, would, which would give me 9. One of them would be the positive root of 9, which is 3, and the other one would be the negative root of 9, which is negative 3. So I have two different solutions for y. I've got y is positive 3, and I've got y is negative 3, which means I've got two different y-intercepts. One of them is the point 0, 3, and one of them is the point 0, negative 3. Okay, so looking at these two formulas, these are formulas that come back in a couple of places in the course. Uh, finding the distance between two points, finding a midpoint between two points, 
So first, if we're looking at the distance formula, we've got two different x coordinates and two different y coordinates. So we have our x and y coordinates for our first point, and we've got our x and y coordinates for our second point, and we want to find the distance between the two of them. So our distance formula tells us that for the x coordinates, we take the difference between them and then we square it. And of course, when we take two numbers, subtract one from the other, they might be positive, they might be negative, but once we've squared it, it's going to be something positive, guaranteed. And then same thing with the y coordinates, one minus the other and then square it. Again, that's going to guarantee to be something positive. So this is sort of a little warning, of course, how to tell if things are going wrong. If you're doing a distance between two points, and if you've got the number that's inside your square root turns out to be something negative, you've clearly made a mistake, because the difference between the two x-coordinates, once you've squared it, certainly could not be negative, and same thing for the y's, once we do a y minus another y and square it, it also won't be negative, which means that what's inside your square root guaranteed could not be negative. If it is, you've made a mistake and you need to go back and, and check your work. The second thing that we need to keep in mind here is that for our distance formula, it has a square root involved in it. And that means we're going to need to remember all of that stuff that we had from back in uh, section 1.3, where we were talking about uh, simplifying radicals. We'll need to remember that when we're talking about simplifying a root, that we might have to worry about perfect squares that are kept inside. So for example, if you had the distance between two points and found that it was square root of 20, uh, I would expect you to recognize that 20 has a perfect square inside of it, that 20 is 4 times 5, so really you should be writing your answer as square root of 4, which is 2 times square root of 5. This, by the way, 2 root of 5, this would be the exact answer. Uh, if you decided to use your calculator and figure out what it is as a decimal, you'd eventually have to start rounding things off, which means if you said instead that the distance was 4.47-ish, um, that's not quite so good, because that's, again, an approximate answer. That's close to the true value. Square root of 20 is close to 4.47, but it's not exactly 4.47. So we'll need to remember that for this course, unless I'm saying that I want you to start rounding things off, we can assume that I always want the exact value only. So if your answer was square root of 20, um, there is no need to start running to a calculator to turn that into a decimal because, in fact, that's absolutely what I don't want. I want the exact answer, and I want the exact answer in simplest terms. So if square root of 20 was your answer, I'd expect to see 2 root of 5, the simplest terms version of that, and that's how I'd want to have you give your answer for the distance. For the midpoint formula, this one is a little bit easier. This one is really just two little averages. Um, the midpoint, that's the point that's in the middle of these two. So if you have two points and you say, please find the midpoint, you are asking for what is the point that's exactly in the middle between these two. And of course, we're looking for a point, so it needs to have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So notice, distance, a distance should be a single length, it should be a single number, and that's what we'll get out of our distance formula. A midpoint is a point, so we'd expect expect to see an x and a y coordinate coming out from our formula there. Um, and to find the point that's in the middle, we're just taking the average. So the x coordinate, once we have the x coordinate for our two points, for the midpoint, it'll just be the average of those two x values. Add them up, divide by two. Same thing for the y coordinates. To find the midpoint, we're adding up the two y values and dividing by two. Okay, let's do a couple of examples here. Uh, we've got three points, point A, B, and C, and for our first bit of business, we want to find the midpoint of AB. So if we're imagining AB being a little line segment, and we want to find the point that's in the middle of these two, and we're going to call that point D, so we can give it a name. I know that if I want to find a midpoint, I'm just taking the average of my x values, so negative 3, plus our positive 7 divided by 2, and then the average of my y values, negative 1 plus negative 3 
divided by 2. And I will just simplify things here. Negative 3 plus 7, that's 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. Divided by 2 is negative 2. So there we go. We've got our point 2, negative 2. Okay, now that we've got our point D, what are we supposed to do for our, our next part of the problem? We want to show that the distance from A to B is twice the distance from C to D. So it looks like I need to do two different calculations here. I'll need to calculate what's the different a distance between A and B. And then I'll need to also calculate the distance between C and D. And then hopefully one of them is twice as big as the other. So let's start. I'll do the distance from A to B first. And so remember that our distance formula is that we find the difference between the two x values and square them. And then the difference between the two y values and square them. Uh, one little aside here before we get doing the actual subtracting and squaring. Uh, because we're going to take the two x values, subtract one from the other, and then square them, it doesn't really matter who we think is the first x coordinate and who is the second, because since we're squaring, no matter what, our answer is going to turn out to be positive. So we'll get the same answer whether we did minus 3 minus 7 or whether we did 7 minus negative 3. Either way we'll get the same answer once we've squared things. And same thing goes for the y coordinates. It doesn't really matter which point we're choosing to be the first y coordinate and which one we're choosing to be the second uh, because again we're going to be squaring things so we'll get the same answer either way. So I will start by saying what my distance is and I'll say I'll start with my x values, minus 3, minus 7, and then I'll square it, and then y value, minus 1, minus negative 3. And then squared. So cleaning things up a little bit here, I've got negative 10, and negative 10, when I square it, that gives me 100. I have negative 1 minus negative 3, that's negative 1 plus 3, which is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So I have square root of 104. Uh, of course, we should take a moment to check to see is this in simplest terms, and it's not. In fact, if you check just even the first perfect square of 4, you'll find that 4 goes into 26. Uh, sorry, 4 goes into 104 26 times, I should say. So root of 104 is root of 4, which is 2, times root of 26. So it looks like the distance from A to B is 2 root 26. Okay, so now we just need to do the same thing, finding our distance from C to D. And we've got our point C, which is 3, 3, and our point for D, which is 2, negative 2. So I guess we will do our we will do our distance uh, calculation next. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so I've got some more room to fit it in here. There we go. So for my distance formula from C to D, I'm going to do the same thing. It's the square root of the difference between the two x values squared plus the two y values, the difference squared. So I have my x value is 3 for C and my x value for D is 2. So I have 3 minus 2 squared. Then I've got, for the y value for c, it's also 3. And the y value for d, it's negative 2. All right, so what do I have? I've got 3 minus 2, which is 1 squared. I have 3 minus negative 2, which is 3 plus 2, or 5 squared. So that gives me square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared, or 1 plus 25, which is root of 26. So we can see here the distance from C to D is 1 root of 26, and the distance from A to B is 2 roots of 26. So the distance from A to B is twice as big 
as the distance from C to D, which is exactly what we needed to show. All right, so this was a, a fairly straightforward one where we just had some points that were given to us and we just needed to apply our distance formula. Um, you could have a question that involves some solving of a word problem where maybe you need to use a distance formula. Maybe there's not a real story attached to it, but there's a little bit of problem solving that needs to go along with it. Um, something like this following example. So here I haven't been given two different points and I just need to calculate a distance. Here I've been given one point and I need to figure out where is the second point. Um, so first thing, we're looking for all the points that have this x coordinate that happen to be five units away from the point two, two. So one thing I know is I've got the point two, two. I know that I've got a second point, that's the mystery one. I know what the x coordinate is. The x coordinate is negative two. The y coordinate, that's the mystery. So the second point, if I wanted to say what it is, I'd say, well, that's the point negative two something, and I need to figure out what that something is. The other thing that we know is these two points are five units apart. So in other words, we know that the distance between these two points is five. So if we started off with our distance formula, we know that distance is the difference between the x values squared plus the difference between the y values squared. And I can put in everything that I have. I know that my distance is 5. I know for the x values, the difference between them is 2 minus negative 2. And for the difference between the y values, it's 2 minus y. I'll just do a little bit of cleaning up here. Um, so 2 minus negative 2 is 2 plus 2, or 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I'm just going to rewrite that as 5 equals root of 16 plus 2 minus y squared. Um, so now I guess the next thing I'd like to do is to get rid of that square root and probably the easiest way to do that would be to square both sides of my equation because I know if I square a square root that gets rid of my square root. So on the right side of my equation I should just have 16 plus 2 minus y squared and on the left side of the equation I would have 25. And I'm going to do a little bit of further cleaning things up here. I can bring the 16 to the other side of the equation. 25 minus 16 is 9. And you may have noticed that I didn't bother expanding out that bracket of 2 minus y whole thing squared. You certainly could, uh, and then you'd have to do some sort of solving involving factoring later on. But I realize here that I've got one thing that's a perfect square equal to 9. And I know what number, when I square it, gives me 9. It's either 3 or negative 3. So in other words, this is kind of like that, that uh, x-intercept, y-intercept problem we had a couple of slides ago, where we had y squared was 9. So we concluded that y was 3 or negative 3. Same thing here. We can say then that 2 minus y should either be positive root of 9 or negative root of 9. In other words, we get two separate different values for y. Either positive 3 is 2 minus y or negative 3 is 2 minus y. So I'll have two different equations to solve for y. Uh, I'll solve for y here. I've got 1 equals negative y or y equals negative 1. For the other equation, bringing the 2 to the other side gives me negative 5 equals negative y, or dividing both sides by negative 1, I get y equals positive 5. So I wanted to find out what is the second point. The second point, we knew what the x-coordinate was. We needed to know what the y-coordinate was. 
and we found two different values and so that means that we have two different solutions there's one point with a y coordinate of negative one that's five units away from two two and there's the other one with the y coordinate of five so in other words the points two negative one and two five are both five units away from two two Sorry, correction on that. Circling back, for our points that we were looking at, the y, x values were negative 2, so we're going to just re, uh, re fix that. So the points negative 2, 5, and negative 2, neg uh, negative 1, are 5 units away. from our point two two and there we go that's the solution to our problem there's actually two different solutions two, negative two five and negative two negative one